We're going to hear stories right now of people that have said yes to Jesus, who found Jesus, and many of you in this room have, and your stories are all different, and we praise God for that. But Jesus has revealed himself to these two wonderful young people. So let's just take a, a seat for a moment, and let's hear how God has moved in their lives and how they found Jesus. So Lexi, would you like to come? Oldest first is going to come and just share testimony. <laughs> I know some of you might look at me and think I'm too young to be baptised, but I actually made a decision to give my life to the Lord when I was 10 years old. At the time, I felt empty inside like I had something missing, but it went when I gave my life to the Lord. Now I'm almost 14, so I won't wait any longer to get baptised. I've always lived in a loving Christian home and gone to church. I'm also homeschooled, which has helped me learn even more about God. When lockdown came, it was a difficult time for everyone, but during that time, I had a dream. In that dream, I shouted, I surrender. Jesus came down to earth and was directly in front of me. The light was so bright. There were so many unique outstanding colours. It was amazing. That really strengthened my faith in that time. Last year, my faith was really challenged. My granddad passed away and it was one of the worst moments in my life because I really loved my granddad and was devastated, but God comforted me and still does. I love that he's always in control, no matter what happens, and that makes me happy to know that he's always there for me. Wow. <sighs> so I just need a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. But praise God. You know what? I love it when someone says that they feel too young to do something because they're always wrong. God, whatever age, is working in our lives. And this is a now generation, not the next generation. They're changing lives. They're influencing their friends. They're seeing changes in their schools and changes in their workplaces and changes. We've got a generation of young people that are making a difference. And we praise God for that. And Lexi, you're part of that generation. And we praise God for you. So I'm going to invite uh, another special young person, Hope, to come. Um, today I'm getting baptised to publicly show my faith in God. When I started to plan this talk out, I saw a picture of a path with lots of obstacles. And it reminded me that life also has many obstacles. But God's the only one who can help you overcome them. Um, people can cheer you on, um, but, nobody, but nobody else can help you but God. All through my life, I've believed in Jesus. I, I grew up in a Christian home, and I've seen, and I've seen signs of, Je of Jesus' presence throughout my life. But when I turned five, the biggest amount, mountain waited, awaited me. It was when my grandma passed away, but because I was so young, I can't remember much of the details, but she was very special to me. The memories that I, that I have, I treasure. Like our last Christ, Christmas together, we made paper chains and sang jingle bells. And the last few nights in hospital, she would raise her hands in awe, awe and wonder of God. Many things had helped me through losing my grandma. Um, I had a teddy that I took off her bed the day she died. Um, my family helped me through it, but most of all, God helped me. The next big sign of God was whenever I was scared, I would see a shadow of an eagle arrive in my room and swoop past. When, when that happened, it brought peace throughout the night. Um, a verse came in mind when, when, um, when that happened. It was Isaiah... 40 verse 31 but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength they will soar high on wings like eagles um, and I also found out that the wing that eagles wings are um, have a wingspan of two and a half meters um, and that they are the largest and strongest birds in the world Lots more, lots more has happened over the past few years that, 
um, that God has spoken to me, which I wrote down in my journal. Hold your journal. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Um all all of this has been a part of my journey getting to know Jesus, my saviour and best friend. A few months ago I attended a youth service that started here. The first meeting God told me to take a big step forward. And the second service, God spoke many things to me, which I wrote down in my journal. In the last meeting, I saw a a picture of a red rose with with thorns on its stem. The rose's flower reminded me of becoming beautiful in, in God's love and living with him. The thorns reminded me of how God can help us, can help defend us from the enemy with our prayer. The big step in the first service was God saying it's time. So here I am publicly declaring on the 12th of June, 2022, my love and faith for Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Claudia had a vision on her heart to see young people worshipping, prophesying, praying, praising God together and bringing nations together as it should be, and a number of congregations with different languages in their, in their normal meetings coming together for an English-speaking meeting in the evening where young people are gathering and praising God. And actually, it doesn't matter what language it's in, what we praise God in, does it? They praise God together. And uh, Claudia's been instrumental in that, and it's spoken to a lot of our young people, and Claudia's going to speak to us this morning and bring the word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Um, I do not have a lot of time, but I'm going to (laughs) shoot. I'm going to get it all out, whatever God has placed on my heart today. Um, It's been amazing so far, right? Yeah. I was sitting there and I was just sobbing and I was like, God, you're so good. You're moving in our young people's lives in ways that we didn't imagine. And it wasn't, it wasn't something we forced them to do. It wasn't something we were like, you should do this. It was something that they have decided on their own. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, yeah, I'm just going to start with a prayer um, because I'm a bit nervous. (laughs) But yeah, dear Jesus, I ask you, Lord, that you be with me right now as I speak, God. I pray, Lord, that you um, speak truth and life through me right now, Jesus. And I pray, Lord, whatever I say, that it will land on good soil. And um, I pray that everyone will receive this well. And I pray, Lord, that you speak right now. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> yeah, so... Um, yeah, so I went to a wedding yesterday, and um, God was like, there's something about this that I want you to pay attention to. So uh, my best friend got married yesterday, and it was amazing, a really nice moment. And uh, God just reminded me, and he said, you know, when a girl gets married, she wears a white dress, she walks down the aisle, and um, it's all really nice and everything. But what she's actually doing is she's making a really, really strong statement What she's saying is goodbye to every other guy on the planet. I want this one. That's what she's saying when she walks down the aisle. She's making a very strong statement. She's saying goodbye to all my past lovers. Goodbye to um, everyone who didn't want this to happen. Goodbye, because I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to pursue this man that I love. That's what she's saying when she walks down the aisle. And um, she gives up a lot of these things for this one man. And um, Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians. He says, many of you have not given up your old sins. You have not repented. That word, repentance, it's a, it's, doesn't always sit well with everyone when they hear it. No one, no one likes to hear, you must repent you need to repent because sometimes we've been, we've been said, that word has been spoken to us in, in a very harsh way sometimes. 
You see, Jesus is the bridegroom of the church, and we are the church, and you and I are the body of Christ, and he is our bridegroom. And in order to walk down this aisle to Jesus, we need to walk with a heart of repentance. And repentance isn't this scary thing that everyone makes it out to be. Repentance is actually the most life-giving thing we read about in the Bible. Jesus came, he died for us, and he gave us new life. And he tells us, will you follow me? Will you pick up your cross and follow me? Well, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to let go of your past. You're going to have to let go of your old sin. And you're going to have to let go of the dirty and filthy things because I'm going to give you something new. And it may seem hard, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Jesus is so worth it. And repentance isn't, isn't a scary thing. It's the most loving thing Jesus has taught, taught us to do. Because when we say, Jesus, I repent, I turn away from who I was before. You know what we're actually saying? We're saying, Jesus, I'm weak, I'm needy, I need your help, and I can't do this alone and I need you, and I want to be like you. That's what we're saying when we say sorry. That's what we're saying when we, we fall on our knees and we're like, Jesus, forgive me for the times that I've hurt you. You know, we've been talking about rebuilding lately, and we've been, we've been going through the book of Nehemiah, and um, rebuilding, it's, it's great. You know, like we want God to rebuild from, rebuild what, all the mess up. We, we want to clear out the trash. We've been talking about that. You see, but re rebuilding, it requires a heart of repentance. We need to come and be like, Jesus, this is me. And yes, you ch you've changed my life and I, I'm not the same anymore. And that heart of repentance is what really pushes this rebuilding to, to happen. That's what it, it, you know, we can't just come and be like, Jesus, rebuild, do this for us and, you know, still be stuck in our old ways. You can't serve two masters. We can only follow Jesus. So, you know, we've been talking about that. We've been saying, God, we want revival. But if we want revival, we need heart of repentance first. If we want Jesus to move in our neighborhood, if we want Jesus to move in our church, in, in, in this city, in this town, then we need to come forward with a heart of repentance. Um, again, if you also want a relationship with Jesus, a strong personal relationship with Jesus, then it requires a heart of repentance. You can't come to Jesus and be like, Jesus, I want you, but I also want my past. I also want the things that I'm not proud of. I also want to hold on to the things that I'm ashamed of. You can only have Jesus. And um, yeah, so God also reminded me of um, Peter. And Peter in the Bible, we know that he, he, he was with Jesus uh, a lot. And um, you would never think that Peter would deny Jesus three times because he was that close with Jesus. But he did. He denied Jesus three times. Um, but what's so beautiful is that towards the end of book of jo uh, John, um, chapter 21, Jesus takes that um, messy situation that once happened when Peter denied Jesus, and he turns it round into something really, really beautiful. He says, in John chapter 1, he says, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And that was three times that Peter said, I love you. 
Jesus turned a messy situation around where, where Peter denied Jesus three times into something so beautiful where, where Peter says, I love you, Jesus, three times. Now, in this story, you can see that when Peter is saying, Jesus, I love you, he says that with a heart of repentance. He says, I love you, Jesus. You're all I need, Jesus. You know everything about me, Jesus. I love you. And he says that out of a heart of repentance. Now, we don't often talk about Peter and we don't, you know, bash him for denying Jesus anymore. We talk about his ministry. We talk about how far he went and all the things that he did for Jesus in the end. We talk about how he ended up dying, you know, how, how sold out he was for Jesus because of his heart of repentance. Now, repentance, again, it's not a scary thing. It's actually the most life-giving thing ever. And if anything, we should all be living a, a life of repentance every single day. If we want to go far for Jesus, if we want to really be sold out for Jesus, we should, be, we should have that heart of repentance. That heart saying, Lord, I surrender. I surrender everything that I am. I surrender everything that I'm not. I surrender my abilities. I surrender my weaknesses. I surrender everything. Jesus, you're all I need. And watch how far God will take you. Watch how far God will take you. Jesus took, God took Peter to the ends of the earth with his gospel. And Peter was an ordinary man. He was a fisherman, fisherman who, who, who didn't have a lot of education and his upbringing may have not been great. But that heart of repentance, he was so sold out for Jesus, it took him so far. And um, you see, we, we sing this, we say, God, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. That's what Jesus did in this story. He took sin, the mess, uh, and um, the, the, the shame, and he made something so beautiful out of it. And um, these girls who are going to be bapt uh, going to get baptized today, um, I just want to say that this is a huge step, but it's a really good step that you're taking. And um, God is going to really, really move quite swiftly from now. And I really believe that in, in, I don't know exactly it how, but I know he's going to do, start doing some great things because it's, you're, you're, you're doing this publicly and, um, God, Jesus loves it when we do things publicly like this. He loves that. It's not, it's not in secret anymore. The fact that you love Jesus isn't a secret anymore. Every, everybody knows that. And God's going to take you far and you're going to shine in that. Where's hope? There you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so I know it wasn't exactly about being buried um, <laughs> and coming back to new life today. I know we talked about repentance, but I know we're not getting baptized today, but this is something we can all um, hold on to is repentance. Repentance is what is key. Repentant. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. Repent. We can always repent um, because the Bible says, and let the holy person continue to be holy. So there's always room for repentance. There's always room to make things right. There's always room. And the thing is, Jesus loves it when we fall on our knees and, and come um, and surrender our heart to him and surrender everything we are. He loves it and he does big things um, with that posture. He loves that. Um, but yeah, I think my time is up and I'm going to quickly pray and then and finish up. But yeah. yeah, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, um, for um, speaking today, Jesus. Um, we thank you, Lord, that you have taught us um, that it's important to come with repentance. It's important that we repent. It's important that we turn away and that we cannot serve two masters. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are the one true living God, that you are great and that you are holy, that you are good. And um, I just thank you for who you are and that you turn all the mess into something beautiful. And that's who you are, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. Um, and I ask, Lord, that you be with us um, 
throughout the rest of our service and the baptisms, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the verse Lexi's asked us to read is from John, um, verse 28. And it says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So, Rob and Beth, if you could come forward and lead Lexi into the waters. So, Lexi... On the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this new life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that the old has gone and the new is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for Lexi's life, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you protect her now, Lord Jesus, from all the harms of the enemy, all, all, the, all the tricks of the enemy, Lord Jesus. We cover her in the blood of Jesus. Lord, you may, may you raise her up to be a voice, a strong, powerful voice to to her generation and the ones be below that and the ones to come, Lord. And we ask, Lord God, that you use her mightily for your kingdom, Jesus. Lord, I'm going to prophesy over you now. <laughs> and Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for the anointing that you're pouring out on her right now, Lord Jesus. This anointing that is fearless, that is brave. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're going to use her mouth as your mouthpiece, Jesus, to touch many, many, many lives, Lord Jesus, with your gospel, with your truth. And Lord, thank you, Jesus, that she's going to be a light in the darkness, that she's going to be salt, Lord Jesus. And we, Father, we bless her in the name of Jesus. She is yours and yours forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, so the scripture I'm going to share today is one that I have always loved and probably came across it when I was a similar age to Hope. Um, this scripture is one that I shared with her a few years ago uh, when she was struggling to, sh to sleep. Um, and she found comfort in it and now has it framed by her bed. Um, so I'm now going to read Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Praise God. Okay. So, beautiful hope on confession of your faith. We baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, I want to read another verse for Hopi and for Lexi as well, of course. And all that Claudia prayed for Lexi, we pray for you, Hope, as well. Praise God. Um, this is from Paul's letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. And um, he was writing to um, 
Timothy, whose mother and grandmother had been Christians. She was third generation. Hopi is fifth generation. So it's amazing what happens when you give your life to Jesus because it has repercussions not just in your life but in subsequent generations. It's way beyond your wildest dreams, your wildest hopes. Now, I'm not going to preach, but uh, I, want, <laughs> I want to read this verse. Also, um, that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, this little child, the word is infant. The child upon its mother's breast. That's how young Jesus begins to work in your life and mine. And with these two girls, God is pushing back the barriers. And he's reaching right even to those little babes. And giving them food and drink and loving them. Um, Hopi's mum, Beth, who baptized this morning, said that she was brought up in our home, full of the love of God, and she says, I have loved Jesus all my life. And Hopi has said exactly the same, haven't you? I've loved Jesus all my life. Praise God. So, um, we thank God for his grace and his workings in Lexi and Hopi and even down to the youngest child in our Christian family. So praise God. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you for Lexi. We thank you for Hope. We thank you for the word that you have spoken over their lives, that you will bless them that you will separate them unto yourself. Thank you that they, they love you with everything in their hearts, in their lives. And we ask you to bless them today. As Jesus was baptized, we read the heaven was opened unto him and the Holy Spirit came down like a gentle, gracious dove from heaven. It's a picture of Holy Spirit. And he came and rested upon Jesus. And that's what we pray, that God will make you rich in his love, that as you grow, that you will also grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that God will make his calling so very, very clear to you, and that he will empower you with his Holy Spirit and enable you to fulfill his will in your lives in Jesus' name. And we pray, bless your family, bless the family of God here today to the youngest, youngest infant. We pray that your grace and your love will work in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.